Jesus Ween is a relatively new holiday that takes place annually on October 31st. You may have heard of it, you may have seen the tweets, you may have seen the bus ads, you may have read the Comic Sans post or seen the Stephen Colbert segment. But that was just the tip of Jesus Ween. I would like to penetrate this topic deeper. This October 31st, join with all Christians under one voice to reach out to others with free Bibles and Christian gifts. Jesus Ween has existed for years, but it only just went viral last year. I think the name is what gets people. The idea of Jesus Ween, at its most basic concept, is to create a Christian holiday to ride on the coattails of Halloween. So, Halloween, Jesus Ween. Except that the word Halloween is not Halloween. It's derived from the phrase All Hallows Eve. So, Eve to Een. It, it makes sense. But separated from this, Ween by itself is slang for penis. It is a shortened form of the word wiener which again is slang for penis. So it sounds like this holiday is called Jesus Penis. You can see why the collective consciousness of 2021, like still delirious from the isolation of the pandemic and deeply dreading the impending winter, just really latched onto this concept. With this in mind, many people thought that Jesus Ween was just a joke, that it was a weird parody from an organization just kind of pretending to be Christian, like the religious version of Birds Aren't Real. I just realized when I said version, it sounded like virgin, but that's also really appropriate for Christianity. Anyway, last year I jot down a little note to myself to look more into Jesus Ween, and now I have and I'm gonna share it with you. Jesus Ween was created by a pastor named Paul Aday in 2002. He had the idea of handing out Bibles instead of candy on Halloween. Because instead of going door to door and asking people if they'd heard about their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, people were coming to his door. And he saw an opportunity. An opportunity to get around no soliciting laws. Which answers a question I'd had of why do this on Halloween? Because November 1st is All Saints Day, a decidedly Catholic holiday. And it would potentially make sense to have your Jesus holiday the day after the night of sinful devilry and debauchery. When people are full of sugar, and regret. Except on November 1st, you don't have dozens of strange children coming to your house and asking for things. I mean, I'm assuming you don't. I don't know your life. So this isn't necessarily an organized observance. It's not a holiday in the traditional sense. It's not even really about Halloween or even about trying to replace Halloween. It's about opportunistic evangelism. Christians are encouraged to give out Bibles on Halloween because it is convenient. You have a legally captive audience. Provided Jesus Ween participants still give out candy because that is the custom and they aren't weird about the whole thing, then I see Jesus Ween as relatively harmless. Well, as an isolated concept removed from broader implications of like religion and conversion and politics, which I don't really want to get into in my video with a bunch of penis jokes, the website does state that Jesus Ween is not against candy. So that is their official stance. Parents should be going through their children's candy haul anyway to remove anything that's potentially unsafe or like anything that they want to eat themselves. So if they find a small Bible like hidden under all the Smarties and they don't want that in their home, well, they can just toss it. I know that general apathy is not the hottest take, but it is what it is. Jesus Ween is a poorly named effort with a distinct religious conversion component. But 
A lot of attempted holidays have weird origins with ulterior motives. Like the time a bunch of candy companies in Cleveland teamed up to create Sweetest Day. It was 1922, I believe seven years after Hallmark created Valentine's Day, and those candy companies wanted more of those sweet, sweet commercialism dollars capitalizing on people's sentimentality. So to promote this new holiday, they handed out thousands of boxes of candy, specifically to orphans and shut-ins and old people and the homeless. The message being, hey, you've been forgotten by society. So here, have something with no nutritional value. And we're gonna go and tell everybody that we did this so that people who have loved ones will spend money on our product. The Jesus Ween people have kind of tried to rebrand their holiday as World Evangelism Day on November 1st, or by calling it Jesus Win instead of Jesus Ween, but it never really caught on. You just can't beat the ween. My favorite part of the Jesus Ween website is the FAQ. The Jesus Ween initiative is not against candy. It's all about spreading the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want to give out candy in addition to your Christian gifts, it is very okay. We suggest wearing a white top because of those who have cultured themselves to wear an evil depicting costume on that day. You could dress as you do on any normal day. As a celebrant of Jesus Ween, what do I say to those who knock on my door to trick or treat? Just say, Jesus loves you. There's an annual campaign section of the website, and I thought that if I clicked on the little read more button that it would take me to additional information or some campaign materials, but no. It just takes me to the search engine DuckDuckGo. Great. Thanks. I guess Google is like a godless heathen. I also really like this section from their press release. Every year, over 25 million people ask Google, who is Jesus? It is unclear if they are given a godly answer to their question. Most are also directed to resources that will only provide little or very confusing information about Jesus and the Gospels. We hope to provide this much needed answers at all times, especially in the month of October and November. Aside from the typos, I love the concern that people are not getting the appropriate information about Jesus from that godless heathen Google. They don't want you to learn about Jesus through internet research. They want you to learn about Jesus literally off the streets at night from strangers. I did Google who is Jesus to see what it says. And at first I was like, oh, you probably can't get godly answers from a site like gotquestions.org. But then I clicked on it and it's a Christian site. They can teach you how to get right with God. If, if that's not a godly site, then I don't know what is. By the way, many news outlets pretty much just ran with like the Jesus penis joke portion of Jesus ween reporting. They didn't even do the barest of Googling. Considering that there were multiple outlets that reported that Jesus ween started in Calgary, Texas, instead of where it actually started, which was in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Even the Colbert Report used the news clip saying that this effort started in Texas. And a Christian group in Texas is promoting a faith-based alternative to the usual sexy costumes we see, evil zombies and other ungodly characters as they call them. Their alternative is something called Jesus Ween. And then on the website in like the little caption under the video, they specify Texas again. I should not be a better source than the actual news, but now I'm glad that I didn't go into journalism and instead I went into the marketing side of communications where you're supposed to tell partial truths in order to convince people to do or buy things. In conclusion, Jesus Ween is a true Catholic holiday, observing the ancient Christian tradition of 
co-opting the names and customs of pagan festivals and making them all about Jesus. In fact, I think that's kind of where the original Halloween came from. I propose that they rebrand Jesus Ween again and just call it Sawin 2 Electric Boogaloo. Jesus Ween is a nationwide festival. For details, go to jesusween.com.